Welcome back. You're watching Beyond World is One, and this is Speed News. Let's get started. The United States warns Israel that it could withhold billions of dollars in military assistance unless it improves aid delivery to the war-battered Gaza Strip within 30 days. In a letter, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin expressed deep concerns about the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza as Israel denied or impeded nearly 90 percent of humanitarian movements between the North and South last month. Blinken and Austin have urged Israel to let at least 350 trucks of aid enter per day, open a fifth crossing into Gaza and revoke evacuation orders to Palestinians when there is no operational need. Israeli military said 50 projectiles were fired from Lebanon and the country's north earlier today as Hezbollah said it launched a large salvo of missiles at the town of Safi. Israeli military said that some of the projectiles were intercepted and fallen projectiles were identified in the area. There have been no reports of any casualties following the strikes. The strike hit the Lebanese capital less than an hour after Israeli military ordered residents to leave part of southern Beirut. Black smoke billowed be from between buildings in Haretirik after the strike. The Israeli strike comes days after the area being sparred from the strikes. Meanwhile, the Lebanese Ministry of Public Health said that the death toll in Lebanon from the ongoing Israeli attacks had risen to 2350 since October of last year, with nearly 11,000 people injured. North Korea claims that more than 1.4 million youth had signed up or rejoined the Korean People's Army this week after accusing South Korean military of sending drones into its airspace. Seoul initially denied sending drones, but Pyongyang claims it has clear evidence of official involvement in the campaign, which purportedly features anti-regime propaganda leaflets scattered over the North's capital. U.S. authorities have hit Lufthansa with a record $4 billion penalty after finding the airline discriminated against over 100 Jewish travelers by blocking them from boarding a flight in 2022. The 128 passengers were denied boarding to a connecting flight after a few did not follow instructions including anti-COVID mask requirements on a flight from the United States to Germany, U.S. transport authorities said. A judge in Georgia has temporarily halted a new rule requiring a labor-intensive hand count of potentially millions of ballots in the U.S. presidential election. The hand count rule was passed on 20th of September by a pro-Trump conservative majority of Georgia's Republican-controlled election board, who say they are attempting to make the November 5th election more secure and transparent. Representatives of different countries, including China, Russia and India, are attending the 23rd Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in Islamabad. The summit is being chaired by Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. Pakistan became a full member of the SCO at its 2017 summit in Kazakhstan, which was attended by ex-Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Former Malaysian Prime Minister 
has been admitted to hospital for a lower respiratory tract infection. The announcement comes after the media reported the ex-premier missed a court hearing in a defamation case he has lodged. The 99-year-old, who served as prime minister for more, two, more than two decades, has a history of heart problems and has undergone bypass surgeries. He has been in and out of the hospital in recent years and was last hospitalized in July. An aide of the president has said that he would be on medical leave until October 25th. He served as prime minister for 22 years until 2003 and returned briefly as premier in 2018. Australia has said that it would invest billions of dollars over the next two decades to expand a shipyard in Western Australia that would become the maintenance hub for its nuclear-powered AUKUS submarine fleet. In a statement, Defence Minister Richard Murrell said that the government will make an initial investment of $85 billion over three years to upgrade facilities at the Henderson shipyard near Perth. He said that over the next 20 years, 10,000 jobs will be created at the shipyard. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China is willing to be a partner and friend with the United States, saying this will benefit not only the two countries, but the whole world. He said a successful partnership between China and the United States is an opportunity for the two countries to be enablers for each other's development rather than an obstacle. A pair of giant pandas arrived in Washington from China for a new home at the U.S. National Zoo. The zoo had been without the black and white bears, one of, the, one of its most popular attractions for nearly a year. China sent the pandas as part of an agreement announced earlier this year by U.S. and Chinese government officials intended to warm relations between the two superpowers. The zoo returned three other giant pandas, two adults and their cub, which had been on loan from China. The new male and female pandas were transported in large white crates with breathing holes and were driven by truck to the zoo. China sent a new satellite group into space on Tuesday from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in North China's Shanxi province. The 18 satellites are the second batch of the first generation of Space Sail Constellation developed to deliver low-latency, high-speed and ultra-reliable satellite internet services to global users. This is the second batch of satellites in the Qianfan network to be deployed into orbit. The satellite group was launched at 7.06 p.m. local time aboard a modified Long March 6 carrier rocket and entered its preset orbit successfully. UN's Regional Refugee Coordinator has said that nearly 3 mil million people have fled Sudan after 18 months of war. He said that the brutality and intensification of the conflict has driven the exodus, adding that the country is facing the biggest protection crisis they've ever seen in recent decades. In India, schools and colleges remain closed across four northern districts in Indian state of Tamil Nadu due to heavy rains which has triggered flooding. Orange alert issued in Bengaluru city for next two days. The state government has said that essential services including police, fire service, hospitals, medical services, transportation will be functional. The Colombian government has granted indigenous people the status of environmental authorities on their lands just days before the start of the COP16 Biodiversity Conference in Cali. 
Among the new powers of indigenous peoples are protecting ecosystems, formulating rules to manage and conserve their territories, planning budgets, managing resources related to the care of nature and making decisions about land use. A federal judge in California has ruled that Facebook's parent company, Meta, must face lawsuits filed by several U.S. states that have accused it of contributing to teen mental health issues by making Facebook and Instagram addictive. The lawsuits were filed last year, one involving more than 30 U.S. states, including California and New York, and another led by Florida. In response, a Meta spokesperson expressed disagreement with the ruling and stated that the company has introduced tools like Instagram's teen accounts with enhanced protections for teens and parents. Hundreds of lawsuits have been filed against social media companies, alleging that their addictive algorithms lead to anxiety, depression and body image concerns among teens while failing to provide adequate warnings. According to Microsoft's latest report, Russia, China and Iran are increasingly relying on criminal networks to lead cyber, cyber espionage and hacking operations against their adversaries, including the U.S. The growing collaboration between authoritarian governments and criminal hackers has alarmed national security officials and cybersecurity experts. The report claims that nations like Russia, China, Iran and North Korea have their own ties to hacking groups and that teaming up with cybercriminal offers a marriage of convenience with benefits for both sides. While governments can boost the volume and effectiveness of cyber activities without added cost, for criminals, these type of cyber espionage campaigns offer new avenues for profit and the promise of government protection. The Biden-Harris administration has announced their plans to provide up to $750 million in direct funding to Wolf Speed for its new silicon carbide wafer manufacturing plant facility. The company makes chips using silicon carbide, which is a more energy-efficient material than standard silicone. The North Carolina-based company's two projects are estimated to create around 2,000 manufacturing jobs as part of a more than $6 billion expansion plan. The Indian government has announced that they will be allotting the much-contested spectrum for satellite broadband administra administratively and not via auction. While speaking at an event, India's Telecom Minister Jyotira Ditya Sindhya said that the spectrum will be allocated administratively in line with Indian laws and that the pricing will be worked out by the telecom watchdog. India's satellite market is set to grow 36% annually and is expected to reach $1.9 billion by 2030. Hong Kong will expand a scheme to attract wealthy migrants who buy luxury homes. This move seeks to bolster the city's hub status and support the flagging real estate sector. The city's economy has grown in the first six months within the official forecast range from that range of 2.5% to 3.5% thanks to strong exports. However, falling real estate prices and sluggish consumption have weighed on sentiment. China's slowdown and geopolitical uncertainties also cast a cloud on Hong Kong's growth outlook. The recent stimulus bonanza by Beijing, alongside the U.S. Federal Reserve's interest cut rate cuts, may provide some relief. Stocks in Asia drop as investors weigh if AI rally that's powered the bull market recently still has room to run. The overall losses topped $420 billion. The moves partly reflected a slide in Dutch giant ASML's shares on Tuesday after it cut its 2025 outlook. Optimism on Chinese stimulus appears to have been dulled at the margin, so much so that markets have taken more profits rather than a bullish position on Chinese equities. 
In the U.S., Nvidia lost 4.7%, signaling a slowdown for some of the biggest bellwethers of the industry. New Zealand's annual inflation rate falls sharply in the third quarter, returning to the central bank's target band for the first time in more than three years. The rate fell to a 2.2% from 3.3% in the second quarter. The results match economists' expectations, while the Reserve Bank had forecast 2.3%. Consumer prices advanced 0.6% from three months earlier, less than the 0.7% estimate of economists. Analysts believe that pricing pressures have cooled appreciably and there is the risk of inflation settling below 2%. The World Bank is planning to change its internal lending guidelines, freeing up $30 billion in additional lending capacity over the next decade. According to President Ajay Banga, this is to help developing countries and emerging markets grapple with climate change and other global challenges. The move coupled with changes in the bank's pricing policies means that the bank will be increasing its lending capacity by a total of $150 billion over the next 7 to 10 years through adjustments, into adjustments to its balance sheet. The changes come at a time of mounting global challenges such as the war in Ukraine, escalating violence in West Asia, worsening climate disasters and massive government debt levels.